Hey everyone, this is Malki Asad, and welcome to this special video in which I will share with you the secrets that helped me get over 100 publications and 80 presentations during my three years of research. Before we start, make sure to check my research course in which I shared my experience on how to take the research project from the idea to publication. The first thing that was critical to my productivity is being part of a team, a team of medical students, residents, fellows, other researchers, and faculty. There are multiple benefits to being part of a team when you're doing research. The first of which is helping others with their research projects. This is especially important for medical students who are still in medical school or when you're a research fellow starting your research time, you won't have many research ideas to run your own projects. So it is a good idea to go and ask other faculty, other research fellows, other residents if they have something you can help with. And there are multiple things you can help with such as data collection, manuscript writing, or analysis if you have the statistical analysis experience. And when you do that help and you contribute to the research project, you would have your name added on the paper. The other benefit of being part of a team is have others help you with your research projects. If you're more experienced with research, now you have your own research ideas, you're running your own projects, you can ask other medical students, other residents, other research fellows to help you with your projects. So for example, if you have a research project that requires you to collect data for 500 patients, and that would take around a month for you to finish. Instead of you spending one month to collect 500 patients, you can ask other residents, other medical students, research fellows to help you with the data collection, and you definitely need to do part of it. You can't just distribute the work, but you can ask them to help you collect the data for the 500 patients. And now instead of spending a month, you might be spending 10 days. And you would use these 20 days to do other research projects, write the paper, uh, help them with their projects, and now you increase your productivity. So in either case, if you're helping others with their research projects, or they are helping you with your research projects, you're dividing the work and you're increasing productivity of the whole team. So instead of spending your time on one paper, now you have two or three or even four. Another critical advantage of having other team members is bringing a new insight, new idea. For example, if you're working on a project and you know how to write the paper, how to conduct the study, but now you have a collaborator from a different department or from the same department that has experience with this topic, you can ask them for their feedback when you're collecting the data, when you're designing the study or when you're writing the paper because they might give you idea that you did not have from their experience. So it's critical to collaborate with other people who are experienced with this field because that would add extra knowledge and insight to your paper. The second secret to being productive, which is not actually a secret, is hard work. There is no way you can be productive in a research time without putting the effort and the time. Many think of research as a vacation time or they don't think that you need to work as hard as when you're in medical school or when you're in residency, but I disagree with that. I had the mentality when I went into research that I need to put the effort and the time to be as productive as possible. But how many hours should you spend a day or a week to do research? There is no one single answer to this question because some might be doing an exam, some might be in medical school when they're doing research, but for me personally, I used all the time I have to do research. I was done with my step one and step two CK exam, and I think that was a huge advantage for me when I was doing research because I was dedicating my whole time to research. I know other research fellows who were studying for an exam, so they were not able to give their 100% time to research. They had to study for an exam after they finish work on the weekends. For me, it was fully research, and that helped increase my productivity. Also, research is like any skill. It takes some time for you to learn how to do it and to sit for long hours without feeling bored or tired. So like studying, in the beginning you might be able to study 3-4 hours and then you increase that as time goes on. Also like studying, you must have good time management skills. So if you like to study for 50 minutes and take 10 minutes break or 25 minutes of studying 5 minutes break, do the same in research. Don't think in research you don't have to follow a certain schedule, you can just work for a few hours and that's it. If you have a schedule when you're writing the paper, when you're collecting the data, you have specific time for working and specific time for breaks, that would increase your productivity and how much you can do during your working hours. Also, you have to minimize the amount of hours you spend not working during your working hours. It's so easy to get distracted in research, especially in your, if you're in an office with friends, people passing by, chatting. 
you might spend three or four hours a day not working while you are considering this as working hours. So my recommendation to you is if you want to do research and stay focused, pick a place that is quiet like a library where you can collect data and finish your work. And when you want to socialize and have fun, you can either do that after work or maybe during your breaks. And before I move on to our next point, make sure that you're taking care of yourself, eating healthy, uh, doing exercise to prevent burnout. You don't want to be working so many hours and then ending up being stressed and depressed. So take care of yourself, have fun. It's a very nice experience and you should make the best use out of it. And my third tip to you is to identify value. In research, like in the business world, there are projects that are high cost, high value, high cost, low value, low cost, high value, and low cost, low value. So you have to pick the projects that are high value and low cost. And that means a project that is impactful, that would make a difference in patient lives without taking so much time. If you could not find a project that is high value and low cost, you should go next to either high value and high cost, which is a project that is impactful but would take a lot of time, or low value and low cost, which is not very impactful but wouldn't take much time. Try to stay away from projects that are low value, which are not impactful, but high cost, which means they would take a lot of time. So if there is a project that you need to collect 2,000 patients and you would spend three, four months on that single project and it's not that impactful, try to stay away from these projects. However, this advice is mainly for experienced researchers or researchers that have options, researchers that have been spending some time doing research such as six months or a year and they can pick the research project they're working on. If you are a medical student who just started doing research or a research fellow in their first week of doing research, you might not have the option to choose different projects. But if you have the option, choose projects that are high value, which means they are impactful and would not take a ton of time to finish. The fourth secret, and it's probably the most important one for you to be productive during your research, is your mentor. Your mentor will decide how productive you'll be, how many projects you'll be working on, what type of projects. So be very careful when you're looking for research positions to look who's going to be your mentor. The interview that you have with your research mentor before you start doing research is a two-way interview. It's not only for your mentor to evaluate you, but also to see if this mentor is a good fit for you and will be able to help you achieve your goals in research and other aspects. So again, be very careful in the choice of your mentor when you're going to do research because your mentor will be a huge determinant of your productivity. And if you're applying for residency or fellowship, your mentor will also has a huge impact on your chances of matching. So pick a mentor who will help build your research skills, help you with your research projects, and is able and willing to help you with your residency application. The fifth secret is to keep a good balance between quality and quantity. By quality, I mean important papers, big research projects, published in high impact journals. By quality, I mean numbers. So maybe articles that would not require that much time, but they're not that impactful, like case reports, viewpoints, communications, or review articles. Usually when you start with your research, you start with quantity. So you would look at numbers, case reports, viewpoints, review articles. And then as you gain more and more experience, you transition to the quality. And this is what happened with me. My first ever publication was a case report I published when I was a medical student. And when I started doing research, I started with viewpoints, communications, small articles, review articles. And after three, four months, I never worked on these type of papers anymore because I'm now more busy with high quality papers, high quality projects. So when you start with research, you would start with the quality, but as you gain more experience, as you advance in research, you would focus on the quality papers. Some researchers keep a good balance between the two. So they have one or two high impact projects that would take years to finish. And they have on the side one or two low impact projects that would not take much time. And my final secret for today's video is managing a team and running multiple projects at the same time. When you start with research, you don't have much experience, you would be more than overwhelmed with one project at one time. But as you get more experience, you, for example, finish your part and send it to a statistician or send it to your mentor to review the paper. You don't want to be sitting doing nothing, waiting for the other people to respond to you. You would work on your other project. If you finish project two, you would start with three. So you would have multiple 
projects at the same time in different stages and whenever one is done you won't just sit and wait for somebody to get back to you you would start on project two or on project three and along these same lines comes the idea of managing a team so now you're not only working on one project but you're managing a team of medical students a team of residents who are helping you with this project so maybe you have two medical students on project one two medical students on project two and now you're managing the two projects you're helping them you're writing the paper you're doing the analysis but you have a bigger team that is working with you to get more papers and do more research and in order to run multiple projects at the same time and manage a team you have to be efficient you have to be efficient in your data collection you have to be efficient in your manuscript writing so you cannot sit forever trying to collect one patient chart you cannot sit forever trying to write one paragraph of the introduction you have to find a flow in which you can do the things very accurately but also fast and that comes with time and i discussed the details on how to be efficient in each stage of the research project in my research course so again make sure to check the research course if you're interested in learning more about research and how to take your research from the idea stage to publication that brings us to the end of this video if you have any questions about research and how to be productive make sure to leave them in the comments below or feel free to reach out to me on my instagram or twitter at malki asad or my Facebook page Malki Asad MD. If you like an individualized advice on how to do research and how to find research positions, you can schedule that through my website and I'll leave the link for that in the cards above and in the description below. If you find any value in this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos about research, USMLE exams or the match process. Thank you everyone so much for watching and see you in future videos. Peace.